Greetings everyone, my name is Etterville, and welcome to my Let's Try of Shiny Gauntlet. It's a dungeon crawler, hack and slash, bullet hell, roguelite adventure, developed and published by Sprite Wrench. In this game, you, have to, you can select from 20 champions and explore the gauntlet, collecting weapons, up to 60 enchanted rings, and battling and or consuming the mysterious remains of defeated foes, all in our quest to chase the wily cultist who has stolen our shiny shard. According to the developers, in the, in the press kit of course, this has been inspired by games such as The Binding of Isaac and Legend of Zelda. It's designed for players who like short play sessions of intense difficulty. With that in mind, let's take a look at the options. Here are all the key bindings. Yeah, this game is done completely with keyboard control, no mouse at all. So yeah, even though, we, well you can just cl click on these things, but the menu here, you can't use the mouse. So you move with the, the Wasta, and you attack using the arrow keys. You can swap weapon with the E key, do an action with Q, and use your ability using spacebar. So with that out of the way, we have story mode and endless mode. So, endless mode is all random, everything, how long we can survive, and story mode is braving the gauntlet to find that wily cultist. Keep in mind though, this is actually on green light, and will be released on the 1st of October for about $8, $8 US dollars specifically. Right now I'm just playing the demo version, so several things may be incomplete or missing. After all, I don't think they'll show us the entire story, It, I think that the ending we'll see in the actual game. Now I'll be going to this blind, so apologies for any mistakes I'll be making here and there. And I suspect I will be dying a little bit. But without further ado, let's get into the story mode. Okay, let's select our champion. Whoops, one second. There we go. Okay, we only have five of the champions to select from here. I believe in the full version we'll have all 20. We have the mage. An arcane acolyte. Skill, cardinal magic, fires a magical blast that does luck times, uh, level times luck as damage. Tree health, mage's ring. Brutus Grimdark the warrior. Hardy fighter. Skill, armor up, adds plus level to your defense. Five health, warrior's ring. Tanky, I presume? Wendigo man, the priest. A pious adventurer. Skill, be healed. Restores plus level divided by two HP. Priest ring, tree health. Okay, our healer. Kakemi Callahan the Thief, a cloaked dagger. Skill vanish, hide from side and guarantees next critical hit, so basically invisibility. Four health and a thief's ring. And Chani Ofe the Archer, a swift survivor. Skill haste, multiply speed times two for a certain duration, four health. Okay, the warrior has the highest, uh, has heavy armor. The thief and archer have medium armor. And the priest and mage have uh, light armor. Although it's strange though that the mage doesn't actually have a name. I, I see a comma here, I, I don't know if it glitched out or something. I can select the text as well, strangely enough. I think there would be a name over here. I'm not sure what exactly happened. Okay, regardless, I think I'll do, because I'm playing it as safe, I'm gonna start as a warrior. At the bottom corner here, you can see the strength, the defense, the lock, crit, and speech character has. I presume that the mage would have the uh, best DPS, mainly because it sacrifices defense and other things, uh, and better luck, but I'll go with the warrior just to be safe. I, I want to take it cautiously and actually get as far as possible, and as a newbie I think that would be the best option. I hope at least some games have warriors not be the best for, uh, starting option. Maybe archers. But we only have about 5 to 20 classes, and these are the basic standard archetypes of mage, priest, war uh, tanky warrior, thief. Healer. I want, I've seen in the green, green light screenshots that there are 15 more, and I wonder how they'll play. And even though the, each of the characters has somewhat of a base, uh, similar basing, they, they're, they're distinct, so I presume that the next 15 classes will be, well, more distinct. Let's get to this, I've talked enough. Let's confirm. And here we have an intro cutscene with the sh shiny shard. Strange enough, this seems like the frame rate's a little bit choppier here. Note that this does not happen in the actual game. I did do some testing test footage to make sure this recorded correctly. But, and everything seems well. So now we'll be following the cultist. Here's the loading screen. It actually goes way above 100%. Alright, here we are. And here, and there's the guard. We're in pitch blackness, and on the, and the green thing over there is a firefly. 
Press Q to bottle it. So now you actually can see yourself. Here's me. I have a mustache, apparently. Helmet, a spear, where I can fire in all directions. And a shield. I can also eat the firefly to get some uh, meat back, shown over here as food, but I won't do that. Here are my stats, my name, level, the amount of money I have, the ring I've equipped, as well as how much time I'm spending on this floor, which is the Zerat floor. Without further ado, let's go. Over here in the corners of the room, we can find all these candles which can light. Now, I'm supposed to technically follow where that, uh, where that cultist went, but I'll go the opposite route just for fun, to see what's over here. After all, I may get some treasure. Oh, whoops, whoops. That's not really intended. And we have our first mini boss. I can de I, ow. I can definitely see where the roguelike elements are coming from. Mainly from all the bullets being fired everywhere. Um, let's see. Okay, by pressing the, the spacebar, I can defend, and it'll add plus one health. Uh, defense. Okay, hasty lich. Not too bad, just be careful about his projectiles. Once again, I'm going to deviate from the pad and go south. And I can also dash by double tapping whichever direction I want. That's nice. Ow. Ah. Yeah, and also just like before with my keyboard movements, I have to be a little bit careful so I don't uh, dash into enemy attacks. Apparently, I can also hold down the button for continuous attacking, but that leaves me more vulnerable later on. Oops, rammed right into it by accident. Okay, that gave me some bonus XP. Now I need more food. I, I could eat my Firefly. I think I will. It restored all my uh, my hunger level. Ah, Vorpal Ring. Oh, one hit KO's enemies, uh, one crit. That's pretty nice. Another of the boss we, another of the same boss we fought. I better take care of all these skeletons first, so I don't get hurt by their projectiles. Dire Lich this time. And I apparently, oh, interesting. Okay, I one hit KO'd out that entire boss. That seems quite overpowered when you think about it. This was kind of a trap. Oh well, get more XP. I leveled up and got plus one max HP. Well, this is a dead end. Might as well actually go to the path of chasing the lick. And yeah, enemies seem to respawn. Ooh, I want that. Oop, it teleported right onto me. That wasn't really fair. I better restore all the defense I have by eating these fireflies. After all, I, I, it'll help me in the long run. There we go. At least the mini bosses or bosses don't respawn afterwards. That's nice. Yeah, even though it went over there, I'm, I'm backtracking because I've seen there's nothing there, nothing of use there. And yep, I think I'm back at my starting point. Now let's actually go in the correct direction for fighting the... Ow, oh, for going through the stage. Ah, yeah. And here's where all the defense is so useful. Le Lucky Kunai something, which got blown up pretty fast. Phosphorus ring. I'll take. I'll take the Vorpal ring. I'm playing a little bit more risky, but the the fact that I have I can create enemies in one hit is so useful. It can be so useful, especially if enemies have a lot of health. Oh, it's so funny being able to reflect projectiles back into it by hitting it. Whoops! Didn't intend that. And make sure to light the candles when necessary. Okay, the green orbs are our experience. And this will be a trap. After all, if no enemies spawn and there's a chest right there, I'll just suspect it's a trap. 
Ah, I suppose... Yep. Uh, what? Oh, okay, This I think this was a fake exit or something. Oh well, continuing on. Oh, another Vorpal Ring, uh, or something. I guess I have to go... Uh... Huh. I think I'm missing something. Oh, there's the exit again. I wonder... Hmm... I suppose I'm missing something. Maybe that was a fake exit and I need to figure out the real exit now. Ow. I could have sworn there's one of the exits somewhere here. Oh, maybe I need to get a key. That explains a bunch. Yeah, so we need to defeat a certain boss and get through this. Ow. Huh, I feel like I'm going in circles. I know that that uh, Necromancer came. Maybe it has something to do with actually getting through the stage and uh, the next stage. Ow, oh, keep dashing by accident. Yeah, I feel like I'm missing something. Ah, okay. Oh, oh, I think I needed to hold down the button and do it from the uh, south side of this. Okay, my mistake. Kind of strange. Okay, now we're in question mark. I think that means floor one. Let's eat this now, so I can get back some defense. It seems quite useful. Ooh, archer's bow. Ah, I can switch between being an archer and, and a warrior now. That's nice. So now I can actually attack enemies from afar. Okay, that was a short stage. Okay, floor one was pretty short. I think we're now going formally to, to something. Oh, whoa. Okay, we're in the desert. I see sand. Let's see what's on the right of us. Oh, ooh, okay. Oh, whoa, whoa. Um, okay, so do we have a fire dragon, iron dragon here. Which can shoot uh, fireballs. Thankfully I can rapid fire, though. Yeah, I know this is the wrong way, but I want to get some treasure. Ooh, and I get, and I get their uh, separate abilities, too. Like I get haste instead of uh, my usual guard. Oh, whoa, whoa. Oh, the dire Aztec is quite damaging. Better take care of it immediately. And it spawns all these enemies. Switch. Okay, so I can get to each stat. Okay, got more health. More XP. I wonder what I can do with all this money. Hi, Titanic Luna. Bye, Titanic Luna. It makes dealing with some of these projectile enemies a lot simpler to do. Prosperous Ring. Haste the ants. Okay, I defeated the boss again. Yeah, having the archer's ability to fire faster is really increasing my DPS. 
Maybe next time I'll start as an archer instead. They have medium armor, and... Well, and there's aren't as exactly as weak as the mages. Or fragile, specifically. I mean, I'm defeating the bosses before they even get one attack off. Come on. I really need to eat these. Okay. Level up. Okay, there was the exit. Apparently, the path, uh, the other path he, w the, the cultist was taking was, n was, not exactly an incorrect one, but a different one. Come on. Oh, too bad. I thought I would get, be able to harm it by repeatedly shooting at it. Oh well, let's follow it. Another question mark floor. Come on. Nope. Ooh. Okay, so I can place a mage. Uh, or I can... Yeah, I'll just be playing as an archer. It, it doesn't really seem appealing to play as a mage. Ooh, and it also buffed my max defense. This will be very useful in, the, in, in later parts of the stage, I presume. Or this run. Especially endless, I think. Where are you? Oh yeah, eat the firefly. Collect the firefly. Okay. So I suppose after every other, after every dungeon floor, we'll have a respite floor here where we can get some certain upgrades. Maybe in the full version, we'll have more upgrades that we can choose from. Let's see. Well, let's go right. Titanic fly trap, which continuously fires at me. We have these flowers, which also continuously fly, uh, fire at me. At least they signal when they do that. Oh, it's kind of hard to see where it's shooting, though. Unfortunately, I can only have max 15 defense when playing as... Uh, when, when playing as the archer. Which is unfortunate. Well, I suppose it makes it less broken, though. Oh, this is so hilarious. I keep hitting it, but I keep taking damage. I do more overall uh, burst damage when playing as a warrior, though. Which is to be as expected, of course. So it's good for, I think, bosses at close range. And I can, act and I can deflect shots back at enemies. That's actually pretty uh, powerful when you think about it. I need to defeat all these slimes. I think firing at it would be better. You stock on health. Let's go south for a change. And of course, I have a wider range of attacks. Or a bigger range, uh, a bigger attack range, I mean. Nimble ring. Nah. Oh, boss. Yep, I can turn right back at it. Although, for this kind of boss, I don't think it's really useful. Oh, and these turn into enemies. Even better. I think being an archer would be better. I can do the same amount of damage faster. Oh, oh, oh. Well, that's unfortunate. I'm frozen during the cutscene, and I can keep and I keep getting harmed by all these flies. Well, that's kind of annoying. I hope that's fixed later on. As in temporary immunity, or just freezing all the enemies. Oh, 
Oh, there's the end of the stage. That wasn't too bad. Alright, well, floor number five. Another question mark, so I suppose this is another respite stage. Let's take a look. Nope, it's a normal stage. More defense, that's nice. Oh yeah, and these enemies have Oh, okay, so these things eventually turn into mini flowers or shoot at me. Yeah, I can see that becoming a problem later on, as shown by some of the boss fights. Oh, ow, 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 ow. That's both funny and painful at the same time. There's the end of the stage. I want to see what's up here, though. Yeah, the boss. I've... There it is. Oh, and it explodes into a lot of projectiles at the end. Yeah, that's going to be a problem later on. If it does more damage. Okay, more health. Or XP. I can see v uh, armor is very useful as at higher amounts it'll block all the da damage you take from your health. We held, which really buffs the warrior's effectiveness. I, I really feel that the plane just now, the mage, is kind of underpowered because it takes some. You, you have to uh, spend some of your food energy in order to get. in order to shoot your projectiles. That may be just me, though. It may be more powerful later on. I haven't even tried the cleric, but it seems like the melee class is a little bit more powerful. Okay, here is the respite stage. We had the botanical gardens before with all these flowers, and a desert before that in the regular stage. So now we're in whatever this is ow, supposed to be. Okay, there's the bottle firefly. Oh, okay, we have crystals in uh, enemies, which fire much more ra fire rapidly more rapidly than other enemies. Dashing is more important here. Where could this be fire? Oh, okay, there's the... Oh, so the boss is a mirror image. This entire stage is based off of crystals and reflections. Interesting. I wonder if this could be better use of some to someone else. There's the end of the stage. I won't go to there just yet. Level up, plus one max HP. There's the exit, of course. I'm not going there just yet. I need to take care of these crystals first. Oh yeah, this is going to be more of a problem if you're playing as a, a non-projectile class, as it's harder to hit it. Hit the enemy without getting hurt yourself. Okay, so now I can actually get to up to 20 health, uh, 20 defense as a archer now, mainly because I've leveled up. Let's go to the exit. 18 minutes in, and we're on the 8th floor now. I wonder if the demo ends at floor 10 or floor 20. I'm enjoying the experience, though it feels a little bit easy right now. As a, After all, I'm defeating most enemies with 1 or 2 attacks, even as an archer or warrior, and the bosses are relatively easy to take care of. Though they are getting challenging a little bit faster than... Uh, a bit... Uh, getting challenging more often. Okay, now we have skeletons. Okay, we go in from reflections to skeletons. It's a little bit faster than I expected it to be. I was expecting the team to be held for two stages. Oh, 
Okay. Iron. Oh, 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 what's happening? Oh, okay. There. Okay. So now we have a little bit more interesting enemies. We have this enemy which, when it fires this beam, its beam can actually change direction in mid fire. That's interesting. Still, I wonder what all these coins can be used for. I already have 12, 20 coins. No time to backtrack, of course. Whoa, okay, okay, some enemies exploding violently when they're destroyed. I better be cautious about that. Of course, I should remember that I can actually block these projectiles. Not that way. Okay, down I go. Okay, here's the boss. Brawny Greater Minotaur. Okay, so yeah, the shield's working, doesn't work that way. Wasn't too bad. Ah, oh, there's the exit. I'm, I'm kind of rushing here as it's going over. It's getting near 30 minutes right now, so I might as well get to the uh, get as far as possible and ignore the other paths. After all, if I enjoy this game enough when it comes out, I'll think of this to a full Let's Play series, and then I can just spend all the time I want going to these stages. I wonder what this is. Oh, and my ring broke. Okay, so apparently if you take too much damage, your ring will break. I, I'm enjoying the combat here. Sure, the controls can feel slightly floaty, that, uh, but I think it's more due to my keyboard's issue than the games itself. Yeah, and, and there's, uh, there's quite a bit of variety. Yeah, with the archer, you can rapidly fire. With the warrior, you can uh, quick tap to do a quick, fi quick attack. Or if you hold down the button, you'll do two attacks, but it'll make you more vulnerable to future attacks. It's good for burst damage, of course. Oh, there's the shiny shard. I guess level 10 is the final stage of this uh, demo. Before I touch it, though... Oh, okay, there's another part. Okay, I got the shiny shard. Let's get out of here. I think there's a trap somewhere. There we go, I'm going inside. Floor 9? What? Do I have a boss fight? Do I? Oh, okay. I think I got sent somewhere else, and yeah, that magician is quite angry. Wait a minute. Do we have to go to this? Ow. Okay, when I get whenever I get hit, I drop it. Oh, I need to grab it. Where's the shiny shard? I need to get it back, unfortunately. Uh, hello? Um... Huh. Um... Okay, I'm pressing a lot of buttons and I'm the game froze right now. Whoops. Uh yeah, I can't do anything else now. You see my mouse cursor moving up about the screen. 
Yep, can't do anything. It's completely uh, stuck. Hold on. Oh well, I guess I encountered a glitch where if you lose a shard fr from that good, uh, from the necromancer or cultist, uh, and you and and you uh, try hitting the cultist again, when he comes back, it freezes it. Music's still playing fine, but yeah, I'm stuck right over here. Okay, so what I suspected what would happen is once I got to floor 10, got the shiny gauntlet. Uh, the shiny shard, the Wily Cultist would then start to chase me in reverse fashion of when I started to chase him. Now, when you're actually escaping and going through those portals, this time in reverse, going from stage 10 to 9 to 8 to getting back up, any hit from an enemy will mean that you lose the shard temporarily. And if you don't collect it fast enough, the Cultist will try grabbing it, and if you lose it, well, then you have to chase the, cult the Cultist uh, back to wherever he was and fast, so you don't need to go all the way back to floor 10. At least that's what I think. It's a quite, rever a quite nice reversal where you have to go through the end of the stage, collect the shard, and get back all the way backwards with a seemingly more difficult foes, as even though it said floor number 9, when I, after I got finished floor number 10 and went back to floor number 9, it seemed like the enemies were tougher, and more varied as I saw a combination of skeletons and mirror-based enemies, and some new enemies as well, though that made me just a random number generator being more mean to me. Overall, to give my final thoughts of, my, of this game in this Let's Try, I quite like it. I, I'm especially looking forward to seeing what the other 15 classes are. The 5 base classes look, are pretty interesting, though I feel like the caster classes are kind of weaker than the melee classes. Though that may, may not be the case, uh, but from what I see it, having to use food to ca in order to cast those projectiles, unless the number of projectiles you fire as you level up uh, increases quite a bit, having to do that seems a bit... It makes it weak because unless you have a firefly or two with you, that'll limit it to a max 10 shots. And unless those projectiles do a lot of damage, I don't really see it using it. The cleric or priest is a little bit different as it heals itself, so it's more for sustained fighting. And the light armor, uh, only about 3 armor per level, I think. I've noticed that basically for each level up, you get X amount of armor uh, depending on your class. For the warrior, it's plus 5, for the archer, it's plus 4, I think. Or plus five maybe, and for the wizard priest, I think it's plus three, and similar for the other armored classes. But I would love to see how the other fifteen classes play out. I'm assuming some of them are different roles and some are hybrids. But like I said, I'd like to see that in the full version, and I would like to try more of those rings. I only saw about five to seven types of rings, or even three to five, I can't recall correctly, number of rings, and they have interesting effects. One of which you being kind of broken, being the critical hit, instantly killing an enemy. That can be really broken with enemies with huge health pools, especially in endless mode, if the if my levels don't keep continuously increasing. I don't really see a level cap in this game. I suppose it's 20, but I think it can go on infinitely for endless mode. I'm not too sure. And having the ability to switch, uh, gaining the ability to switch between another class eventually to your run is quite useful. It's like dual classing, and so you can switch between different situations. And the benefits of the special ability use in one class will carry over to the other one, though it'll have the same time out, uh, cooldown time or cast or uh, affect the duration time. Like as you saw for the warrior, whenever I used the armor up ability, the, the increased armor would persist into the archer, although only up to its maximum armor cap, of course. So I do like that as well. The enemies, though, they felt quite simple to take care of. Though at around floor, once I started getting the crystal or shard back, or floor eight or nine, it did start to quickly become quite uh, difficult when I had to avoid getting hit and all the increase uh, of projectiles being fired. So that may fix itself in later parts of the game. Though it may be just the RNG again making it easier for me. Overall, I do like what, what I see here, and I may play the uh, full version of this game when it comes out on October 1st or whatever. For $8, I'll hold off on that decision until I play off, uh, play it a little bit more. Right now, I'm not sure if this game is worth $8, because I really do uh, see the, how the other classes play, as well as the monsters, other game elements and whatnot, before deciding $8 is good enough. Right now, this game is at least five, uh, worth $5. Though, like I said, I need to play it more to, and see more of the final gameplay in order to decide if it's worth $8, or even more to even more. Well then, it's unfortunate I wasn't able to get to the end of this demo, but I think I've seen enough to, uh, to enjoy and make my final conclusions, as I've said for the past few uh, 5 or 6 minutes. I, w I wish luck to the, to the developers of Sprite Wrench once they officially release this on Steam. It's currently on Steam Greenlight, so I'll 
and on itch.io. And I'll post, I'll post the links to those, both of those uh, in my description. You can actually get, grab the same demo I'm playing right here on itch.io. And there's three versions, one for Windows, one, one for Mac, and one for Linux. Well, not counting the different bit versions. So, you can play it out and if you like this, you can try, try ordering the full version and see if you like that as well. Right now, I kind of recommend this if you want short play sessions, as the game seems kind of compressed in terms of floor layouts, but as the description says, it's for designed for players who like short play sessions of intense difficulty. And I can see when intense difficulty can come from, uh, seeing from my experiences in this last stage. Anyways, thanks for watching, and have a nice day. Doodles!